What's up everybody, Paul from PTZ Optics, and in this video, I wanna show you how to connect multiple PTZ cameras to your joystick controller. We're gonna go over serial joystick controllers and IP stick joystick controllers, so stick around after this. All right, so welcome to PTZ Optics. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. If you've got a PTZ camera, you're gonna learn a lot on this channel. Now, first of all, we have two main categories of PTZ controllers for controlling the pan, tilt, zoom of your cameras, and that is software and hardware. Now, software controllers predominantly over the years have moved to IP, meaning a single ethernet connection to your camera will give it an IP address, which you can enter into the software to control your PTZ camera. But that's not the only way you can control your PTZ camera with software. You can also use a USB port. And USB ports can actually not just send video and audio, but they can be used for pan, tilt, zoom control. And in the software that you're looking at, you can use the setting for UVC, Universal Video Codec. And then there's one more option that's pretty predominant here, which is serial control. And that's these two ports on the back of this camera. You can see there's an in and an out. So you can daisy chain those together. So those are like the main control options for PTZ cameras. And you can do either software control or a hardware controller. Now in the realm of hardware controllers, there are two main types. And I have the Huddlecam HD HC Joy G4 here which is a very affordable serial joystick controller. And then I'm also gonna show you today the PTZ Optics Super Joy, which is really one of the best IP joystick controllers, which also supports serial, so it can do both. Now, with IP and serial joystick controllers, there's a couple different connection points on the back. Ethernet is generally used not only to control the cameras, but it also can be powering the joystick itself. So it's powered over Ethernet. And with IP joysticks, we use an IP address for the unique camera to connect them. And with IP joysticks, you can type in the IP address of each camera into this system, and we'll show you how to do that in this video. But you can also log into the IP joystick with a web browser, and we'll show you that as well. And when you do that, you can just type in with the keyboard and mouse all the credentials and it's very easy to set up. Now, serial joysticks, which we have here, these are old school, but they are also very affordable and super easy to use. A serial joystick controller has a serial port on the back. And we're gonna go over both serial and IP joysticks today. We've got tons of links to software, so we'll link to that in the description below. We're really talking about how to connect multiple cameras to a single joystick controller. Let's start with the serial joystick. All right, let's start from the beginning. Let's plug in a camera and get it all set up. This is a PTZ Optics Move SE camera. It's powered over ethernet, so simply plugging in this ethernet cable to our network switch, which supports PoE, we'll turn it on and we'll see the camera do its little happy boot up dance. So let's put this camera, well, before we put the camera down, what I wanna do is I wanna connect the DB9 cable to the joystick and the eight pin mini DIN cable to the in port of the back of the PTZ Optics camera. So there's an in and an out for RS-232. Now there is RS-485, which is another serial connection, which is designed for super long camera runs and you can run home run connections back to the joystick. But today I wanna to show you how to do a cascade cable, which is a daisy chain setup, meaning that we can plug the joystick into this camera and then daisy chain the next camera through this out port. So I'm gonna show you how that's set up because this is a, really what makes serial joystick cameras really nice. No need for a network, all serial cabling. So this camera is connected here and on. And then I'm gonna take the female eight pin mini DIN cable here, plug it into the back of the serial joystick, the Huddle Cam HD HC Joy G4. Plug that right in and you can t tighten those up as well. All right, so now that that's connected, by default, it should just be able to control your first camera, right? So this joystick is set to cam one. 
It has a 9600 baud rate, which is something that you can double check if you're having problems in your camera's OSD menu. Make sure that that is all set up properly. Let me show you that in the OSD menu because that's gonna help us with our second camera setup. So if you ever have any issues, you can just double check by going into the on-screen display menu and going into the camera setup where there's a communication setting area. And this is just where you can confirm the serial connection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now this is the protocol, so that's Visca for serial. This is the address, which I'm gonna turn that address to two because I'm gonna have camera one linked camera two here. But essentially we've got baud rate 96. So all of your settings in the camera should match what the joystick's doing. And then camera one will be address one. And then the second camera in your daisy chain will be address two. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll set up a two camera system. Perfect. All right, so for serial connected joystick controllers, adding the second camera requires what's called a cascade cable. It's got eight pin mini din on both sides. So I'm going to plug one side into the out port of the Move SE here. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug the out port right there. Boom. So in and out. Then I'm going to go out to the next camera. And on this camera, slide it a little here. I'm going to go on to the in port here. And this camera is the camera that I set address to. So this is address two. So this way, when I go to the camera port of number two, it will, the joystick, uh, number two on the joystick, this one will control. Let's test it. Let's make sure this is all working here. All right, cam one is right here. I've got control. Now let's try cam two, moment of truth. Boom. Cam one, cam two. We're controlling them both with a single joystick. So we've done it with serial, and you can continue to do this. You can do four, five, six cameras with a cascade cables, and you don't need a network. You just need to daisy chain them from one to the next. So that's easier for a lot of live streaming setups. It reduces the cabling because you can do it all one to another to another. Next, we'll try IP, and you can choose which one's better. By the way, as we go to IP, let me know which one you like better. Are you setting up a serial joystick, or are you setting up an IP joystick? Let me know. Before I forget, though, there's one more cable in the serial world that you need to know about. This is a DB9 extender. So what I showed you in the beginning of this, this course, in this video, was the DB9 cable, okay, that goes to the 8-pin mini DIN connector. This cable is like an adapter-ish cable, and it only goes about eight feet. It comes with every PTZ Optics camera. If you need to extend the cable from your joystick to this, that is where you need the DB9 extension cable. And these are available in 25, 50, 75, and 100 foot lengths for your serial setup. Don't forget about that. All right, it's time to go IP, and my favorite IP joystick is, of course, the Super Joy. As soon as I plug it in, it's going to turn on because it is power over Ethernet. Now, this joystick can support serial. So if you're working in a world where you got some older serial cameras, you're moving to IP, this is the perfect joystick. It also has HDMI. So you can output live video to a monitor to see what camera you are controlling. So this is a great little joystick. I'm going to set it up with this camera once again. Uh, plug it right in and it's going to turn right on. This is the PTZ Optics. 12X Move SE, one of my favorite new cameras. These cameras have auto tracking built in, but that doesn't mean you don't need a joystick controller because having manual control is super important. In fact, the PTZ Optics Super Joy can toggle auto tracking on and off for these cameras using the custom buttons here. So we'll take a quick peek at that, but in more, I wanna kind of stick to how do we get multiple cameras into this joystick controller, starting with this camera right here, the Move SE. Now, when you've got your Move SE camera or any you know, IP connected camera, this could be a Sony camera, right? Any camera that supports the Sony protocol, it could be a Panasonic camera, it could be a variety of cameras that you're connecting. The IP joystick uses an IP address. And depending on the camera that you're working with, you're gonna to need to find out what that IP address is. 
Many cameras support DHCP, which what that is is when you connect the camera to your router, if it supports DHCP, it'll automatically give the camera an IP address. Now on PTZ Optics cameras, you can simply hit pound, or sorry, star pound four, and on the video feed, it'll show the IP address that it has. If the camera is not in DHCP mode, you can hit pound star four and turn it into DHCP mode so it gets a local IP address on your local area network. The reason why that's important is because the way that IP networking works with multiple cameras is that all the devices need to be in the same range. So currently we are at 192.168.21, that's the range, and then the last few digits that go up to 255 is the unique IP address. So what's interesting about this IP address here is this is the IP address for the SuperJoy. So I can type that IP address into my web browser and bring up the interface for this SuperJoy. And that's actually one of the easiest ways to connect multiple PTZ cameras to this joystick. You can also use the setup button here to manually enter the IP addresses of your camera. So it's your choice how you want to do it. Uh, you could have a couple different cameras that are IP connected and maybe one or two that are connected via serial. And that's why it was nice that we started with the serial tutorial because on the serial side of the world, you are still probably going to want to connect the first camera to address one, use a cascade cable to get to address two. And if you're one of those rare people that are using both IP cameras and serial cameras, give me a shout out in the comments below because I wanna see what you guys are up to. That's what this device was really made for. So let's go ahead and assume that you know how to get your camera's IP address. I'll show you really quickly over here what we do to ma manage all of our IP addresses because we have a lot of cameras in this studio, many studios do, and what we'll often do is we'll create a Google Sheet that has all the IP addresses of all the cameras and devices on our network, even things that aren't cameras like computers, studio monitors, uh, NDI decoders and things of that nature. So it's a really nice, good idea to not only assign static IP addresses to all your cameras, but keep them in sequential order and keep track of them because when you add them into vMix, when you add them into OBS, when you're troubleshooting a problem, when you are adding them to your joystick, you do need to know that. Now, as I mentioned, on this joystick, we have the IP address. So it's 192.168.21.221. When I enter that IP address into here, 192.168.221, the web interface for the SuperJoy appears and I can go ahead and log right into the device and go ahead and set it up. Now, previously I had a camera here that was a Panasonic camera. You can also go into here and search for any NDI camera. So if you have any NDI camera whatsoever, you can search for it on your network and quickly add it directly into the device. So that's actually what I'm going to do because that's the easiest way to add a couple cameras to your setup. Now, if you don't have NDI cameras, you can just use the IP address. And I know a lot of us are using maybe a Blackmagic video switcher with HDMI or SDI, not using an IP workflow. That's fine. So I just found a couple cameras. I'm going to add one in here and click OK. And basically, I've added multiple cameras to this joystick to show you how easy it is. So the web interface is the easiest. You can use the setup guide. And now what I wanna do is quickly show you this working. So you can see the camera in front of me here and the camera's moving. Now the camera's moving at kind of a slow speed, which is totally fine. I'm cool with the camera moving slowly, but I can edit all of these speeds right here. So I can edit the tilt speed, which is up and down. I can edit the pan speed, which is left and right. I can edit the zoom speed, how fast it will zoom and how fast it will focus. Now these bottom ones here are the preset speeds. This is how quickly the camera will move between presets. So now you'll see the camera is gonna move a lot faster. So it just depends on the type of video that you're trying to create, how quickly you want the camera to move left and right. 
All right, guys, that is how you add multiple cameras to a joystick controller. We talked about serial controllers. We talked about IP joystick controllers. There's also tons of software controllers out there, just like uh, vMix, for example, right here. And you can see I can quickly control cameras with vMix. Most software out there is going to require network connectivity. But as I mentioned, you can control cameras with USB. You could control cameras with serial using software as well. We've got video tutorials in the links below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let us know what videos you need to see for your PTC cameras to shine and so that you can operate your cameras with excellence. See you in the next video.